Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so thrilled today to be joined by the wonderful Matthew Good to talk all about the offer on Paramount Plus. And you you had a bit of hesitation in taking this role, which I thought was quite interesting. And I'm always really fascinated by that that trajectory and that journey of, of kind of being able to overcome it. Was it something where once you started diving into a lot of the character research and really inhabiting him in the pre-production stage that you felt like you kind of really connected to it and overcame some of that initial hesitancy that you'd had when you were offered the role or was it kind of an, a bit of an ongoing journey as you were filming and just becoming more and more connected episode by episode? Well I'm a classic self-saboteur um, so I think it was just it, he's a daunting character to play I think whenever you play somebody who's and I've had a little experience of this who's that well known um you immediately feel like I've really got to get this right. I mean, I you feel like that with any job, but but I was I, I'd seen many years previously because I'm getting on a bit now. Um, the documentary called "The Kids Stays in the Picture," and which is if you haven't if people haven't seen that, they should watch it because it's just just a, a slice of the golden period of Hollywood told by someone who's I mean he sort of became a caricature of himself by the end. Um, but yeah, but I mean, really and truly, he was such a brilliant tastemaker, and 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 the thing that was most daunting was this 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 voice, his voice, and and his he has an extraordinary cadence and timbre to his voice, and it's very musical, and so your initial thing, as always, you know, <laughs> I'm like I can't do that. There's no way I can do that. But luckily, they 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 gave me the job. They they made they made they made me an offer, and I, and uh, and that's obviously sometimes what's most daunting is because if you've been involved in the in the audition process you've done it a few times you sort of worked into it if they just go wham bam there you go you go um but i yeah so i i, I but what was great and the person who really helped me the most at the beginning was was dexter fletcher i mean it was you know it's, it, you're quite honored when someone bestows a, a role like that upon you and thinks that you can do it and if someone else thinks you can do it it helps it helps oneself and so i was i was watching a lot of these amazing interviews from the 1970s on YouTube in fact you can go down these incredible wormholes you start and then suddenly you're like blimey I've been doing this for five hours but I did find I found one particular interview from then I think it was 1977 um <laughs> he's so candid it's unbelievable and he's where he's just being so rude about Robert Redford and and like so and you're like no one would do that these days it's 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 almost shocking it's wonderful and so I would lift little bits of things that I'd seen from that and I and I pop it on screen and and send it to Dexter who was in LA because um I nearly lost out on the job because it took me so long to get a visa um and we worked long distance I would do my homework he'd send me little things to do and I'd send them off and 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 then you know I think I only had about a week by the time I got to, went to LA before we started filming so um yeah he has a slight superpower Dexter he really does and, and that I mean every single person be it the person who was looking after craft services or his DOP, there was just unanimous love for him. He ha he has the most in infectious energy, um, and I mean, yeah, it was. He helped me really get 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 my confidence up in the, in the first couple of episodes, and then once you once you start, you're off. You're off to the races. With the fact that that you were going back and forth with Dexter before filming Long Distance, mm. was was he kind of sending you over specific scenes and you were working on specific points, or was it just kind of finding different inroads to the character together and and really well? In that way? He'd set he'd set, well because he'd started he had all the other actors there in LA, so I didn't want to be this guy who um, he so he was setting them tasks and. Uh, like writing character biographies and all this, and when did you meet Al Ruddy and what did he mean to you? And so, and they would read them out to each other over there. And I was like, I don't want to be the only one who's not doing their homework. So <laughs> I would film myself in character uh, doing what they'd done. And it was it was very, very helpful to me, actually. Um, and what was the second part of that? Sorry, Sweetie, what's the... Yeah, no, really just about like what the inroads were that you were finding together during that part of the process. Um. I suppose just I mean just you're just trying to make make that character as much flesh as possible. So it wasn't only wasn't just vocally. It was, you know, how you watch I watch Bob fairly closely, and you try to you try to get in his how he uses his hands, how he stands. You know, um, it, does he look at people when he's listening? You know, all those sorts of silly things. And so, yeah, it it, it was all about it. 
a slow and steady transformation of trying, of trying, of trying to be able to do him. And I, th- I think I got close. <laughs> you know? no, you, you did a great job. And, and it sounds like you had about a month and a half in terms of a lot of the Crucial. dialect work. Yes, and, thank God I had and, that month and a half. Yeah, you know, and, and even when you were getting your visa, like a full week just in a hotel room, just listening to him nonstop and watching those interviews. Um, and with what you were saying about like the musicality of the cadence or even just the physicality, how did you kind of carry that over into the series in terms of you're, you're playing him in a lot of instances where there's kind of a real fury to the energy. Um, you know, he's in these very high tense pressure situations work-wise, but then yes. you do also get to have some of those smaller, more nuanced moments with him as well. And, and it's interesting because when, when you're in kind of these big meetings or there's a lot of other characters, even the volume is, is going upwards. And so what were, what were kind of the small disparities that you wanted to have between those two slightly different versions of him as to, you know, when it's the more brash and heightened version and when it's a little bit more intimate and vulnerable with him as a character. Oh, that's great. I mean, actually, the thing I was going to say was um, what I really concentrated on is I, I did have, that made it slightly easier for me and, and also made it slightly more daunting. What, and what I used to get to help, to really help me get the voice was was this big speech that I have in episode six. So that's really what I used to, to send back and forth to Dexter, just going, what do you think? Um, and... Um, I, I wasn't. Yeah, I mean, he, he, I have I have a wonderful arc. That, let's not forget also that that one of the reasons that 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 the volume might be going up and and there's a, a disparity between these softer moments and and these moments where he's po- positively volcanic um, is because he is he has he we, we we at the beginning he's like the king of Hollywood and then it's a slow and steady downfall to really where he is almost behaving like a hobo. <laughs> in his house and and obviously there's a huge amount of cocaine that he's taking and and alcohol and you know and and, and I think that's the, you know I, I never go into a scene going this is where I'm going to be big or this is where I'm going to be small but you're trying to find the truth and and I really was keen to because he talks about it in the kids stays in the picture and, and throughout the book that his love for Ali you know that I know he married another six times after her ever the romantic um but that relationship really did mean a huge amount to him, and we don't show it in this in the in the offer. But he he would have had a child with her at that point too, um, and so the, one of my favourite moments, and it, we almost didn't get it because we were losing the time for the day. But there's a Meredith who plays Ali, who's wonderful, and we had you know I that was the other great thing. I had these wonderful, a, a wonderful ensemble of actors. It really was like a a treasure trove of a sandpit to play in, really. So, but I but I. I have, it's a vast cast, but most of my work is with Miles or with the incredible, the really incredible Bern Gorman and 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 Colin Hanks um, and Meredith. So I, I have, it was, yeah. So, but my favourite moment is when she comes to the door in, in episode 10. Um, and we nearly lost this scene. It's when she just, because she turns out, you know, she, she's, she's, she's handed me divorce papers and you know, we think we're never going to—he's never going to see her again. And then she turns up to the premiere, and it's this sort of slightly heartwarming moment. But we nearly didn't get it. We had like one take on either side, and I find it really emotional when when we watch it because obviously Elton John's Rocket Man comes in. And I don't know. I'm probably ruin, I'm probably ruining it for people who want to watch it now. But it's um sometimes you get a bit of of um, lightning in a bottle, and that was one scene where I was proud to be a professional and get it done. <laughs> And you like like you were alluding to earlier and, and touching upon, you're also playing him through a lot of different stages professionally and personally. Mm. And there's so much pressure and tension that's swirling around him, but it's it's not the same type of pressure and tension at every stage. You know, you said at the beginning, it's it, he kind of relishes it. Like it's a pressure that he really enjoys and he feels like he's untouchable. And then as things start to close in on him, that obviously really changes his response. And so how did you kind of go through the scripts and, and look very intricately at lo- a lot of the external situations where his personal life was at that point and figure out the different yeah. responses that he was going to have emotionally to that sort of pressure and tension and pressure cooking? The situation well you you what you do have is a, is a difference between the where, where the emotion in those scenes is like it, it's him as uh the head of the studio so it, what, what he doesn't like is already is lying to him and and he feels that that's quite he doesn't want anyone being duplicitous and remember he's got his he's he's we're concentrating on the the godfather and, and everyone's interactions but bob was running studio he was looking after nine films at a time so that'll make you crazy. And you don't want someone who's like, 
so we're not having Marlon Brando. And then suddenly it's like, <laughs> he's showing you an audition and it's, and it's Marlon Brando. So it will make you crazy. And the fact that, I mean, what's sort of amazing is that, is that um, Coppola just refusal to, to 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 find a middle ground, and you know, it, there's a great scene where Miles blows up at him, and he's like, "Take the t- take the win, man! I got you, Brando and Pacino, and now you just put Jimmy Khan in the bloody movie." Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's so nice because Miles's character, I mean, Al Ruddy, and it's a whole love letter to Al, but he's he, we might as well call him the fireman, really, because he's putting out fires everywhere, and he's really quite calm doing it. But it's just nice to see this freeze on of like please because as al said he said every day of making the godfather was the worst day of my life um but yeah so so it's it's more about these the little the, the relationships of how it is the film so um so yes yeah, so there's there's three songs of stuff that flashes up with just being lied to etc cetera, etc cetera. and then when then then really and truly the battle is once the drugs are sort of taking over and Ali's gone and everything else, it's it's and we see him with Robert Town, for example, when Robert Town is <laughs> we're having a chat about Chinatown, he's now openly crumbling and this and you know and this the guy who's so well dressed and everything else, the facade is coming off, and so um, it's try, it's trying to because it's got a nice tone. This I think I think some people would would have wanted it to be super serious Godfather documentary sort of type thing, but that could have been incredibly boring. And they were big characters, these, 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 the, the, the characters in this. So um, you want to try and find the light and the dark. And it was, and I, to be honest, it wasn't something you had to sort of search through and go, I'm going to put, I'm going to turn that up to 10 there and put a, a bit of a flavor in here. It was quite natural. The scripts were great and had a really great flow to them. And you, so you always knew where you were. And we, although you jump around because you never shoot it in a narrative, um, the way the narrative is written. Um, it was just something you just, you know, I'd sit down and, and we know what scenes are coming up. And generally there's certain scenes when you go, oh God, that's, I'm going to be quite puckered on that day. There's a lot of pressure to get that, that right. And you, um, because I, I mean, I was always, I was sat in a hotel room for seven months because the fear of getting COVID and the production shutting down, not very nice. Um, so I literally lived like a monk. If I wasn't on set at Paramount, they weren't saying we had to, but you know, LA's not, well, Hollywood's not my most comfortable town for me to be in you know and I've got my kids back at home and stuff so I would just be in the in the room working I very rarely dropped a line you know um because if you spend days and days and days in you actually quite enjoy doing your homework and because the scripts were, were so well written and, and like you were just saying, they're quite big characters and, and you're playing one of the more heightened characters within the series. But because that yeah. was his personality, you know, you're not you're not taking dramatic license in the way that you're playing that. Did the scripts really help you to find that line of of how heightened can something be? How big can a choice be, um, you know, and making yes. sure that it still felt like a very connected character? Yeah, but because I mean, as I said, you know, there is an element to where even where Bob sort of became a caricature of himself by the time he got into his sort of sixties and seventies, and and um, <laughs> he lived a hell of a life. But from all the stories you can read in and read Easy, Easy Riders, Raging Bulls, and the personality that floods out of him, if you read if you read the book, which is obviously a lot a lot more in the book than than in the, the documentary of a kid stays in a picture, you just feel like you can swing, <laughs> you can really swing for things, and very. I don't really remember. I mean, I remember sometimes Bern and I just, Bern, the wonderful Bern Gorman, just going, should we just, well, let's spinal tap this and just t- we'll turn it up to 11 just for our own amusement because, and very rarely would a director come back and go, all right, guys, this is too much. If, but, you know, so, and, we, and obviously, we listen, we've all got so much reverence for The Godfather. I mean, we had so much fear of not wanting to be the, the part that let it down that, we were all very in tune and we took it we had an awful lot of fun taking it very seriously um but yeah so i don't know sometimes sometimes you just you get into a really good rhythm of the way that the way that you work and you just you know you you you're, you're giving your director what he wants most of the time which is i don't know why that sometimes it's sometimes you need someone to step in and really help guide a performance um but on this i felt like we were all all very much on the same page which is lucky 
Yeah, no, that's really amazing to hear. And, you know, you were bringing up before as well, he wasn't just working on The Godfather, he was overseeing multiple projects. And what's really incredible- And projects, like what a tastemaker yeah. was, that like, no one would make Harold and Maud now. Yeah, Chunky, you know, yeah. he had such an eye for, for projects that no one else was touching and seeing the yeah. reverence in that turned out to be real, real pinnacles of cinema. And so when you were researching him as a person, did you find yourself kind of going down a deep dive in terms of cinema history at that time, you know, looking more deeply at a lot of the projects that he was working on and how did his, how did his creative eye and his taste for storytelling influence characteristics and traits that you saw in him as a person? Oh, blimey. I mean, there's a lot in that question. Um, there's, there, there's, there's endless amounts of stuff that you can read, not endless, of stuff that you can read in the books. But so, so as much as factual information that you can pick up online or whatever, and you, you are collating a huge kind of Venn diagram collage that you can, you know that it's going to be little sweet spots that are going to be really useful to you. But it was, as, it was as useful to me as bumping into someone and then recounting a story, which happened multiple times, either at Paramount or... Um, um uh, in this in the you know you know getting a sandwich uh you know someone will come up and go you're playing bob evans and and, and they would tell me a story about how they, they he used to buy jewelry from their uncle or something and how lovely he was or what well, you know and th th just so you knew how he was with your his fellow man as opposed to how he it was working in the industry that's as as joyous to me as as oh look he you know he as when for example juno temple juno god love her She's amazing and she's really generous. So her, she, one of her friends, she's lived out in Hollywood a long time now as well. So one of her friends bought, when Bob passed, he he had, there was, an, was a very Hollywood thing, I think. They auctioned off all of his stuff and she, the, her friend bought a pair of his glasses. And I was like, oh, babe, I've got to see this. Can you bring him in? And she did. And they, what was fascinating and I was able to actually put into my performance was they were covered in bite marks. Up and down, I um, up and down them. I was like, I would never have thought of that. I mean, you might have had one moment where you do this just because you've got a phone or something else, but actually to know, you're like, why would that be? Is is that nervous <laughs> nervous disposition? Is that listening to he's 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 he's, be, he's being hair dried by Charlie Bluedhorn down the phone? <laughs> he's sort of sitting there going, oh god, I don't know. And uh, so we were able to work something like that in, which is it's great. Um, I, I I have to say, I mean. I'm so pleased that you, you, I went through the fear of doing it. Um, uh, I'm t I, I, t I just love the man. I really do. It's, it's one of those things where you really do fall hard and fast for your character. I mean, what's what's great about what you're bringing up there about the bite marks on the glasses is that's not something that you would you would discover reading a book or what? No, exactly. Do, because that's something that he's doing elsewhere. And so when you when you were talking as well about watching a lot of interviews for the physicality, how did you kind of take the physicality that you saw on screen and, and think, well, what's that when he's moving around? You know, it's the same way that you and I talking here now is not the same as we would be moving around as people if we were walking around. and, and Yeah, 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 exactly. And also and also what you're watching on screen if someone's giving an interview. Um, <laughs> he's so candid, it's unbelievable. But it, it's it's a version of himself. It's a presentation. It's not the real man, which is also why once you know that this is a sort of he was just, that's his sort of PR. It would have been quite a boring performance if I gave the same performance as he gives on, on, a, on a talk show, which is quite calm. And, <laughs> but, you know, from everything else that he has, there's so much other personality um, to come out, which I said gave you gave us great license. What what was let, I'm not I'm, I'm way too tall. I, I, I literally could hear that in. I, in, in, when I was sitting watching American football on a Sunday, going, when will this day end? Um, I would hear him, you're not the right casting, man. You're not, you're not casting. Oh, go away, Bob. What are you talking about? You know, you know we'd have these conversations. And I, you're too tall, would be this thing that I would keep hearing. Because So I do, I try my best. I can't, I'm a foot taller than him. So I'm, I know occasionally it doesn't, it doesn't perhaps look like the same physicality, et cetera, et cetera. But, but when I'm behind the desk, I think I've got him down pretty well. Um, I don't know, I, you know, and also, but let's let's be honest. A lot of our performance comes from. I felt like once I had the glasses on and the clothes, that was like a like a like a, a suit of armor. Um, but only because I'd done enough work on the, the to the point where I, I no longer had to worry about how I was going to do the voice, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I felt fully in it um 
But most of my, half of our performance comes from what we get. You know, to be open to everything. And so I had Bern Gorman giving me this brilliant Charlie Blue Don, and I had Colin Hanks giving me Barry, the most <laughs> annoying character, you know, and everyone else. And so, so, so some of it becomes very just instinctual. I also thought it was so fun to watch a lot of the, the power negotiations because sometimes sometimes they're more on the micro, sometimes they're more on the macro, you know, and it's yeah. it's this kind of mix where sometimes he really wants to overtly exert his power and negotiation yes. in a situation. And sometimes it's more nuanced. And, um, you know, it's also great because sometimes it comes through as like charisma, like I'm going to charm you into doing what I want. And sometimes it's, I'm going to shout at you and make you do exactly what I say <laughs> you're going to do. Yes. Um, and so how did you find those different spaces of, of where there's well, kind you- of, always these different types of power play for him we were you have these you well, the, he was a master at it really and and you know he, he 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 had bags of charisma but but there's also a sort of a law to how you know so he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna be at his most subtle not giving anything away when he's trying to get he's trying to make it look like it's no big deal but like let's just swap bob de niro and let's just swap de niro and al pacino when he's talking to the the the, <laughs> the other studio head and that stuff you can see it's no one wants to they're, they're 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 very powerful man and it's not it's not a jokey situation and then and then you see him struggling to connect with brando really which is which was and i gotta give a shout out to justin chambers because when he, he was terribly good i mean that was one of the few times i did forget my lines we had this wonderful moment where because obviously brando was quite food obsessed <laughs> and he was munching these onion rings as we were doing this scene i was it's quite hypnotic anyway and then, and then, the, and then, um, Adam, our director, was like, "Cut!" And we, I was like, "Oh no, I thought that was really good. What's my every cut?" And he comes across, and he just said, "He said to him, he's like, Justin, why don't you just do the onion rings just a little bit slower, like, like you love them, whatever it was. I can't remember what the direction was." And we so said, "We did the next thing, and he, but just this simple piece of <laughs> direction, and then Brando." really couldn't care less about about sitting there with Bob. In fact, he doesn't even really know who Bob is. Just sitting there with these onion rings. I was like, oh my God, he's Brando. And I and I forgot my line. And I, I went bright red. And I was like, oh fuck, I'm so sorry, Justin. I'm so sorry. But it was wonderful. But yes, so this is what I mean. Every, with it, Everything is different with every, with everyone. You could, Nothing is like a, you don't just do a blanket performance for how you, it's it's more nuanced than that. Even if, it, even if you're swinging big, there's still got to be, what am I getting out? Of, like, he, he, there's a minute, there's a minute, there's a manipulation when you're a studio head. And that's again where some of this anger comes from. It's like, you're not doing what I'm asking you to do. You know, why? And then I get to really scream at him when he's like, and I can't swear on this, obviously, but why is it Pacino has pages <laughs> and I effing don't? <laughs> it's just done it. But there's not too much of that from, from Bob. I think, I think if we had him being that outrageously angry <laughs> all the time, I think it would be, it, you wouldn't, you wouldn't enjoy him being on the screen. Whereas I think we've got a good balance of, of like, oh my God, what's he going to do now? Right. You know, and having that balance as well is, is part of why with what you were saying earlier about the relationship with Ali, getting to see those sorts of moments and and that sort of vulnerability. And, yes. And off the back of that, I wanted to ask you about filming that. Well, that's scene just where- part him being at home when he's not on, you know, it, it's you're really let into the private life, and I, yeah. I actually want. I was so desperate to go. I went, I've walked up to Woodlands, which is where his house is, which is actually now being, not demolished, but changed a lot since it's been bought by someone now. And I went up to see if I could see the swimming pool or, or the iconic tennis court, and and they wouldn't let me in. <laughs> so, I just sat at the gate and said a few words to Bob and felt like a bit of an idiot, and then walked home again. But um, yes, it's that when he's with Ali at home, it's very important that we see. Uh, a can be totally so- a, so- a slightly softer side, and but 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 then you also have to see why she ends up leaving him, which is like he is obsessed with his job. It's a tough job, um, and so we do get to see the. It's like Smaug showing his underbelly um, <laughs> occasionally. And and you know it's also really great because we get to see those moments like that scene where she's come and they're talking in the house and they're kind of saying that final goodbye in the, yes. in the last episode and the camera holding on you after she's walked out and after she's closed the door. And that was a nice it's scene also because that, that scene was about their relationship, but also with what you were saying where 
he's trying to have this real self-reflection and this is the person I want to be, you know, I don't want to be so tied to my job. I want to be able to do both of these things and to honor both of these spaces in my life. And she's the one that's like, but you just can't, and you're not that person and you're never going to be that person. Um, and so for you, how did you want to play the duality of the fact that it's a real self-reflective moment for him as an individual, as well as kind of this, this real moment of this relationship's never going to work because of everything that she's saying out loud right now. And especially when, yeah. the, when the door closes and you kind of hold for that extra moment. Well, it was a very, very beautifully written scene. To, 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 and, and, it, and I felt like it was, we were able to sometimes you, well, I don't know, but sometimes your directors want you just to get on with it. <laughs> and, and then and sometimes you, you really have an opportunity to show greater depth to your character and so you can't have a man who's that passionate about his job not show some passion and thought into his, into his private life because Bob was a, a highly sexualized individual not in any kind of me too way in fact in, in many ways actually there are so many interviews where he's like I prefer hiring women I think they're a lot smarter than men um, which is very different to this, the incredible male chauvinism of the time I mean it's a real time capsule so we don't judge the characters but um, so yeah, I I liked that scene a lot because you you get to see it all ticking and you get to see the you know I suppose it's a, like a naivete, this powerful man in Hollywood. I'll get it back. I've got I've got the finest food. I've got this lovely thing that, that I put the chef in, and it's it's all going to go. There's this positivity, and you, and it's important that we see because it's going to be the the next episode or whenever it is, he's going to be down, you know, right down and out. Um, I don't know. It was a, it was a pleasure to, it was a pleasure to play. I try not to think about too much of this sometimes, you know, sometimes we do, you just got to, and I have watched quite a bit of this, which is very rare for me, but mostly because I wanted to see most of my, I had such an odd time of it that like, it was very rare to have been in a room with more than three people for me, you know, cause I was, I had just these people I was always playing with. Um, so I have watched a lot of it and we were, I think we're all very proud of it. And I just hate speaking about it. <laughs> I'm just not very good at it. Well, I so appreciate everything that you have been talking about with it. It's oh. so, so fascinating to hear all of the different elements that went into, you know, especially a character and, and a person like that. So really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Matthew. No, thank you so much, Mara.